In this session, we talk about sourcing physical products for your e-commerce or Amazon store from India. My guests are Megla and Margaret from Indian Sourcing Network. And uh, uh, those two ladies will uh, give us an overview of what's possible when you want to source your products from India, what kind of products you can get. Uh, some pros and cons comparison with the sourcing from China. Also, we will talk about Indian sourcing trip. Uh, they are organizing a trip with uh, 70 entrepreneurs uh, who want to explore opportunities in India in person, physically on the ground. So you can go with them on a trip in October 2022. So check the links below in the description to their sourcing trip, to their other resources they provide. And now enjoy this presentation and conversation. So uh, today we will be talking about uh, sourcing uh, physical products uh, from India. It's of course, this topic is uh, good for Amazon sellers, for e-commerce sellers. Doesn't matter where you sell your products, but you could uh, source them from India. And uh, Megla and Margaret, they are perfect experts. They are organizing uh, India sourcing trip. Also, they are um, they have India sourcing network and Megla recently moved to India. So before we jump to the content, could you please introduce yourself and uh, how do you help Amazon sellers? Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Gustas. It's good to be back on the channel. So uh, my name is Megla Bhardwaj. I'm in India and uh, I am basically my experience is in the sourcing industry. I've been working in the sourcing industry for 20 years. I was in India, Philippines, China. I lived and worked in China for 10 years. And then um, I was in Singapore and now back to India. So for the last uh, three or four years, I've basically been helping Amazon and e-commerce sellers source products from India together with my partners, Margaret and Kevin. Um, I organized India Sourcing Trip and I'm also the co-founder of India Sourcing Network. So yeah, that's about me, <laughs> Margaret. Okay, yeah, well, I'm also obviously the co-founder of India Sourcing Network, and I originally started sourcing from China back in early 2017, um, pivoted to sourcing from India in late 2017, and uh, still sourcing from the same supplier I met then in Hong Kong. Um, and I've previously to that, I have been, um, I suppose, running businesses, we've had our own businesses, worked as managers in different uh, roles in various sort of organisations and, and government bodies so i've got a bit of a business background as well all right so i know that you have some um, updates prepared about sourcing from india and also we'll talk about sourcing uh, trip uh, to india for amazon sellers which is happening in october 19 22 2022 you will find the links below to that for the trip and for the india sourcing network in the description of this video but uh, now i think we are ready to hear some updates we talk a lot about china and other countries, but let's talk this time about, about India. Okay, so here are the topics that we want to cover in the next 30 minutes or so. First of all, we want to cover why source from India. And uh, we have done a couple of webinars with you previously at Gustas, and we have covered sort of an overview of India sourcing, but we thought it's a good time to kind of do a refresher as well of the basics. We'll talk about some of the differences with China, labor cost comparison, what products to source, and then also India sourcing trip. Why source from India? So one of the biggest reasons that specifically Amazon e-commerce sellers find sourcing from India advantageous is because there are lots and lots of unique products that can be found in India that are not manufactured in other countries such as China. There's a history of handmade products that you can find in India that are made out of natural materials like wood, metal, ceramic, glass, jute. This is India's specialty. So if you are looking to differentiate your brand, and uh, you know, source something different from what's made in China, uh, then India is a good opportunity and a good um, uh, um, possibility. Also low MOQ. So a lot of the products, because they are handmade, suppliers are okay to accept low MOQs. In fact, MOQs can be as low as 50 pieces, even though we don't recommend uh, sourcing 50 pieces because it will not be efficient to ship them. But if you do want to uh, test a product, this is a really good, you know, this is very advantageous. Suppliers also have something known as MOV, which is minimum order value, which means that they will say, okay, uh, you can source maybe, you know, a maximum of, let's say, or a minimum of uh, products worth $5,000 or $8,000. And then within that, um, you know, order value, you can have as many SKUs as you want. You can have like 50 pieces of 10 different SKUs if you can manage that. 
So that is very beneficial for new Amazon sellers who are starting off, uh, who don't want to invest a lot in one product, or even if you're an established seller and you want to test some SKUs, that's a really good option. Um, another advantage is that most of the suppliers that you will deal with will communicate in English. So communication becomes quite easy. You can not only talk to the owners of the factories in English, you can also talk to the engineers, to the R&D staff, sometimes even to the production staff. You can communicate with them in English and talk about you know, the challenges that they're facing in production or if there are any product specs that you need to discuss with them. So it becomes quite easy. You can also get on a Zoom call with suppliers and discuss you know, samples and um, uh, have conversations about product development, et cetera. There are no trade tariffs when you're sourcing from India. So if you're sourcing from uh, China into the US, for example, there's you know, 25, 35% trade tariffs, but uh, uh, from India, there are no additional trade tariffs. There are of course some import duties, but in general import duties are between two to 4% maximum about 8%. So that's another advantage. You can be more cost effective for certain products. If you're sourcing eco-friendly products, India is a really good option because there are a lot of different materials that people are, that suppliers are experimenting with and there are lots of different options available. And we'll show a few of the eco-friendly products in subsequent slides. Low, lower labor costs. So in China, in general, labor costs have been going up over the last few years and production costs have been going up. So a lot of the um, low value production has been moving out of China. And in fact, the Chinese government also wants their suppliers, their manufacturing to move up the value chain. So they are sort of letting go of these, you know, low, low value kind of products. So for example, apparel, shoes, a lot of the, uh, you know, bags, these kinds of products that require more labor have been moving out of China for quite a few years. And so this is a good, um, uh, you know, India is a good option for such products, which are more labor intensive. There are also a lot of emerging industries that you need to um, you know, look out for in India, for example, electronics. Now the government is really pushing the electronics industries. There are large factories being set up by the likes of Apple, Samsung, even some Chinese companies like Xiaomi for mobile phones specifically. And these factories are producing products for the domestic market. But gradually what will happen is that the supply chain will develop and then there'll be more OEM kind of factories that, uh, you know, that produce like power banks and headsets and those kinds of smaller consumer electronics items that are so popularly uh, and widely available in China. So that electronic sector I'm seeing is kind of developing pretty fast. Um, also toys, this is another focus industry for the government over here. There are a lot of benefits being given to uh, suppliers and manufacturers to set up factories. There are also, um, you know, a lot of uh, uh, like there's a trade show that's going to start specifically focused on toys. So this is another category that will develop pretty fast in India. Mark, is there anything you want to add over here? The best thing I think about uh, sourcing from India is the relationships you can get with the suppliers. Um, they're really easy to deal with. They're very friendly and they want to become your friend. Like most of them want to want you to ask how their family is and, you know, how, what's happening in their life and not just, you know, be very business orientated. I think it's and it's very nice and, you know, they're actually lovely people to get to know. All right. So here is a table that um, describes some of the differences between India and China. So first of all, there's a lot of unique handmade products in India, and there's also emerging industries for automated kind of production, whereas China really specializes in a lot of the mass produced products. Um, India, low MOQs. China, typically MOQs are higher for customized products. In India, we find that there's generally more respect for IP. So if you are a buyer and you have a customized product or maybe a patent, patented product, you can be more confident that the design will not be stolen by the supplier or shared with another, um, another buyer. Whereas in China, we found that IP infringements are quite rampant and suppliers would, you know, many suppliers also sell on Amazon directly themselves. So sometimes they even, um, you know, try to sell buyers products on Amazon. So that we found is, you know, happens less in India. Although, of course, there are bad actors everywhere, but in general, it doesn't happen that much. And also we found that, you know, in India, the legal system is in English. So if you do need to litigate against a company, then that is easily doable. You'd find a lawyer, you can actually send a company a legal notice and you can take action in case um, the supplier has compromised your IP. 
And I mentioned lower labor and production costs in India, whereas in China, they have been increasing. No tariffs. One of the disadvantages of India is that there are fewer product categories. So in China, you can source anything and everything. But in India, currently, there are a limited number of categories that you can source. And we'll talk about the products that you can source in subsequent slides. Not all factories are online in India, so it's more difficult to find factories and it's difficult to vet factories. Um, if you do a Google search, you'll see you know, hundreds and thousands of factories, but not all of them are export experience and export focused. So it's difficult to vet the right factory. Whereas in China, there's you know, global sources, Alibaba, there are a lot of websites where you can go and find factories easily. There's not much information available online about India. Whereas there's plenty of blogs, YouTube tutorials, experts that are doing in, uh, that, that are sharing information about China. So it's more, uh, you know, easily accessible. Um, I think we are probably the only group that's, you know, providing information about sourcing from India um, to to uh, basically posting posting all of this information online. I just wanted to share some photos of, uh, you know, some recent factories that I came across. So this is a toy factory in India. And most people have this perception that production in India is, you know, very kind of rudimentary and very basic, but that's not the case. There are handicraft industries where stuff, you know, products are made by hand, but at the same time, there are also very large automated production lines that are, you know, coming up, that are being established and, you know, similar to the factories that you'd find in China. So this is a very up and coming toy production facility in India. They have all of the advanced equipment, everything is done, you know, uh, it's, it's automated and uh, they're producing in, in high volumes. This is an auto factory in India. I just thought it was interesting and I wanted to highlight this. So India is one of the biggest producers of cars and other types of automobiles in the world. And again, there are lots of, you know, different types of automated factories that are there. And this is another emerging industry for exports as well. We find a lot of bigger importers who are looking for automotive replacement parts or auto accessories, they are coming to India for these products as well. And then there's, of course, the other side, there's handicraft production. So this is a factory that does metal handicraft and most of the processes here are done by hand and they're labor intensive. So in India, you'll find that there are both types of factories that are, um, that are there. And uh, Mark, you have visited your factory in the city of Maradabad. Do you want to share your, um, you know, what, what you learned about your factory and your impressions over there? Yeah, well, look, I thought it was really actually a great experience to, to go to the factory and actually understand how your product is actually made and how much labour intensive it is. Um, you know, a lot of our products, they're all metal, but say like um, a blade of a knife, each one is individually hand polished. Um, and there's a, a guy there with his cloth polishing each little piece. And I always feel guilty when I do an order of a thousand or something. And I think some poor man's got to stand there and hand polish each piece. Whereas in China, all those things are done, um, you know, by a machine. So you do get a much higher quality. And um, it was sort of good to go through each level um, around the factory and just see each department. And so you've got a better understanding of why it takes that little bit longer because, I mean, the production time is... I find a lot slower than um, it is out of China because with, you know, China, it's like a mass produced thing where they press the button and it basically is done in a day. Whereas a lot of the components are all hand, even say a handle on maybe a cup or a mug or something, they will stand there and actually bend each piece individually and a lot of things like that. So it's where you get um, the time consuming, but you get a much better, you know, handcrafted product. Okay, thank you. So here are just some charts and some data that I wanted to highlight. So if you can see, this is a comparison of the minimum wages in different countries. And China has overall been increasing quite significantly over the years. And India is still at a lower rate over here. And Thailand has also been increasing, but Vietnam and India are the two countries that are still at a lower level. Um, this is a really interesting study that was done by a global supply chain director at Procon Pacific, and this is for bags. So they were manufacturing bags in three different countries, and if the production of bags in China was zero, they found that Vietnam was minus 11% and India was minus 37%. So if the raw materials are sourced locally, and if the product is labor intensive, you might find that the prices are lower in, in India. 
But of course, if the raw materials need to be imported from China or another country, then it might not um, be as cost effective. So you've got to you know, keep in mind that not all raw materials are available in India, but if they are available, then you can get a really good price. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the different types of products that you can source. And here we are talking about the Amazonable or e commerceable kind of products, um, you know, more of the consumer type of home products. So the biggest category that we see um, uh, having success in e-commerce is home decor and gift items. And these are products that are made out of metal, wood, ceramic, jute, cotton, glass, mostly all of the natural materials. Uh, if you're looking for like a plastic spatula or you know any kind of uh, silicon baking mat, for example, that's still better sourced in China. You may find some factories in India, but the MOQs may be you know, much higher and they only do customized kind of products. So as of now, these categories are really good to source. There's also a lot of kitchenware and tableware items. So whether it's dinner plates, salad bowls, cutting boards, knives, uh, plates, um, you know, spoons, forks, etc., those kinds of things. Furniture items made out of wood is very popular. And the uh, most common type of wood in India is mango wood, which is a very sustainable and an eco-friendly wood. Um, it is also lighter than other types of wood, and it also has a very beautiful grain. So that is the most popular wood. And mango wood is actually mostly available in India, and it's not available in China. China mostly does acacia or bamboo wood, whereas India specializes in mango wood. There's a huge industry of furnishings as, as well. So there's cushion covers, rugs, um, bed sheets, bed covers, bed spreads. Again, mostly made out of cotton, um, also polyester, but mostly cotton and other natural materials. Pet products is a growing category. We've, we've got really interesting suppliers of bowls, bedding, toys. There's one supplier that does a lot of eco-friendly toys for pets as well. Then fashion, this is a big uh, category. There's jewelry, there's um, accessories such as scarves, belts, shawls, and then there's footwear such as leather footwear and um, you know flip-flops and things like that. For jewelry, there's costume jewelry, and then there's also diamonds and gold and silver. So in case somebody is very adventurous and they have like a half a million dollars in their bank, they can try trading diamonds. <laughs> in, in fact, India is one of the biggest, um, you know, cutters of diamonds. So there's a city in Western India, and they specialize in cutting and processing diamonds. Uh, textiles and apparel, this is one of India's biggest export categories. And again, cotton textiles is what India really specializes in. There are all types of textiles, including knitted and woven. And for knitted textiles, you have things like socks, t-shirts, vests, um, you know, shorts, uh, night dresses. And for woven garments, you have ladies apparel, pants, tops, um, those kinds of things. There's also silk and wool and denim jeans and de denim jackets. Organic cotton is a big category too. So in fact, there are more organic cotton suppliers in uh, India than there are in China. So if you're looking for organic cotton, India is a really good option for that. In fact, India is the largest producer of cotton in the world. I mentioned eco-friendly products. Um, I will sh share some examples in subsequent slides that are quite interesting. Leather is a very uh, big category as well. And there are all types of leathers. So if you're looking for like a harder leather for equestrian products, uh, like saddles or uh, you know harnesses, you get that as well. And then you also get leather that is used for things like garments and textiles or you know ladies' bags, a softer kind of leather. You find that as well. Food is a very fast-growing category. There is a lot of different superfoods or, or herbal supplements that um, importers are sourcing from India. They're doing really well, and uh, these are also being blended in various uh, ways for you know, some health benefiting uh, um, sort of blends. And then there's also tea, coffee, and spices. And in fact, even for tea, we are finding that people are blending tea with different herbs and spices and then private labeling them. So Mark, is there anything that we missed here? Is there anything that you wanna cover in terms of the products? Like we talk to so many suppliers every, <laughs> every day. <laughs> right? I think we've covered just about everything, but I think um, one of the best uh, sort of choices is the eco-friendly products because there's so many beautiful products which I think Megla is actually going to go through and show you some slides of all the different types of things that you don't even imagine can be um, a really viable thing and something that's great to sell a brand story on so I'll let you go on and show those products. So um, let's talk about fabric so there are a lot of different types of 
um, you know, interesting fabrics that are made in India that are hand loom fabrics. These are not made on a machine loom. These are actually hand loom. And uh, one of the types of fa fabrics is jacquard. And what in jacquard fabric, the patterns are actually woven into the fabric. They're not printed on the fabric. So while weaving the fabric, they, they, the, the patterns are woven into the fabric. It's a very interesting kind of um, uh, fabric and very high quality. And it comes in different types of uh, uh, you know, materials such as cotton can be done on silk as well. Then there's a lot of block printing. All of these fabrics over here, you see these are hands block printed. This is a map that shows all of the different types of fabrics that you can find all over India. And each state in India specializes in a different kind of fabric. So you see over here in Western India, for example, the fabrics are a little more colorful. They've got embellishments such as mirror work. There's some tie and dye over here. The South is mostly known for silk fabrics. The North is mostly known for woolen kind of fabrics um, and a lot of shawls and pashmina shawls specifically. And then over here in the, in the North as well, you find a lot of embroidered products and hand beaded products too. Eco-friendly products. So these are some of um, a very interesting products that are coming out of India. And there's um, a companies that manufacture bags and wallets and other types of fashion accessories made from sustainable materials such as cork, cactus, pineapple fibers. So all of these are plant-based materials. They're very eco-friendly and uh, um, uh, very popular in overseas markets as well. Um, also for eco-friendly products, there are disposable plates and dinnerware that are made from areca palm leaves or sugarcane waste. Um, those are also being exported in very large volumes. Now, this is an interesting product category. Um, they're actually fabrics and other types of furnishings that are made out of recycled PET water bottles. So the water bottles are actually cut into pieces and then they are woven into fabrics and then the fabrics are turned into you know, cushion covers, rugs. And there's, there's one company that's also making uh, shoes out of these PET water bottles and they're selling them in the domestic market. I also see that even in the domestic market, there's a lot of focus on sustainability and eco-friendly products. And that's why we see all of this, you know, also uh, um, being popular in for exports. Uh, for example, over here, if I go shopping to a grocery store, I'll not be able to get any plastic bags. All the shopping is, is done in, uh, or, or you get your groceries in paper bags. Even for deliveries, they all use paper bags. There's hardly any plastic that's being used. Um, so that's something that we're also seeing in manufacturing for exports. Um, also, a lot of suppliers, they prefer to go, uh, prefer to do no plastic packaging for their products. They do, they use only, you know, paper or jute or other types of eco-friendly material, even in the packaging. Um, some companies are also producing in a sustainable way. So, for example, this company makes organic cotton products, and not only do they produce an, uh, an eco-friendly product, even their factory runs entirely on solar panels. Then these are some of the metal home products. In terms of metal, there's uh, brass, iron, uh, stainless steel, aluminium, all types of iron, uh, all types of metal that's available. Wooden products, again, as I mentioned, mango wood, but there's also acacia and teak wood. Pet products, this is a very interesting and cool company. They make uh, a range of eco-friendly pet toys and uh, a lot of other types of pet accessories as well. Macrame products are popular too. These were hugely popular in Amazon last year. And even now they're doing quite well. So you'll find a lot of that happening here. These are just some furnishings. I want to highlight these doormats over here that are made out of coir. Coir is actually a natural material that is made out of the husk of coconut. And it's very biodegradable and uh, a very long lasting. So this company in, the south, in south India, they produce literally hundreds of thousands of these coir doormats. They export them to um, around the world. And in fact, they are one of IKEA's largest suppliers in Asia. So they have um, you know, two or three different factories that are producing these doormats and they're a hundred year old company. Uh, very interesting. Okay, so that was our presentation, Agustas. And uh, we wanted to share you know, some resources in case people are interested. We have a Facebook group that people can join for any help that they need. We've also got um, indiasourcing.net, which is basically a B2B sourcing platform where people can source products and contact suppliers. And then we've also got India Sourcing Trip that is coming up in October. And um, if we have some time, then we'll just talk about the, the trip.
But before we go to talk about the trip, did you have any questions, Agustas? I would like to know, um, is there a kind of a, com can you compare the culture of Indian manufacturers and Chinese? Maybe like they, they look at the quality in a different way, or maybe they are slower, or I don't know, some cultural differences. Yes, that's a really good point. And um, one of the things that you'll find is that in India, the pace of life is a bit slower. <laughs> that's for sure. So that reflects in business as well. And uh, so you'll find that maybe, you know, suppliers are not as quick to reply to you. So for example, in China, if you send out a coat in the morning, you'll have like, you know, 10 different suppliers responding to you by afternoon with, with a detailed price list, etc. That doesn't happen in India. So you'll have to wait a bit longer. Maybe you'll have to follow up with them. Uh, Indian suppliers, you find are more selective about who they work with. Um, and um, also relationships are really important in India. Of course, in China, they're important, but in India, they're even more important. And uh, buyers, I mean, suppliers are always looking to develop long-term relationships with buyers so that they can get repeat orders. Um, they prefer not to, you know, have like short-term buyers who just place one, one order. Uh, they tend to try to understand or they want to understand the buyer's background and their requirements and also what their plans are for the future before they start working with them. So often you'll find that, you know, sourcing agencies or even uh, uh, suppliers will want to get on a call with you and they'll ask you questions about, you know, okay, who's your, what does your company do? What's your background? What other products do you do? So they want to get to know you better before they decide whether or not they want to work with you. And Mark, do you want to add to this? Because you have sourced from China and India. Yeah, look, I find just the communication. I mean, it's so much easier to get my point across. And like with most of the factories, and I mean, even the really big factories that, um, you know, we've been dealing with in India, you actually usually get to speak to probably the owner or the manager, even like I've had people, I've been uh, the students and people get very panicky when they um, get a call and they're meeting the manager or something like that. Um, so whereas in China, you usually just get the sales rep and she sort of interprets what you say to somebody and it goes down the chain. And I think that's where a lot of things get lost in translation because, you know, what people think was said doesn't always carry across. So I find that that makes a big difference to your whole um, relationship and the fact that they will hop on a Zoom call so you can look them in the face and, and get a lot better um, sensation, I think, as to what they're, you know, reacting to when you're asking questions and things. So, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, look, I wouldn't go back and source from China. I just can't, you know, to me, the difference of being, um, you know, in India and just with everything, the box productions, all the things, the issues we had in China just seemed to go away in India. But, of course, you've got to work with that supplier, you know, and make it a relationship. And it's, it's a, a win for both of you, I think, and that's the way they like to work. All right, so uh, your team can help a lot uh, e-commerce sellers with sourcing from India. And one of the things is what you now organize is India sourcing trip. So can you tell us more about this, for whom it is, what people can expect? Yes, I will not tell you, I will show you. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a video that we did from the previous trip. So I'll play this on mute and then I will talk about the trip so that people can get a good idea of what it's all about. So um, the trip is basically for anybody who's looking to source products from India. I mean, it says Amazon business here, but actually it's for anybody, whether you're an e-commerce brand and a large importer, retailer, everybody. And there are three aspects of the trip that we really focus on. One is learning all about sourcing from India. Second is sourcing. So we take you to a trade show. And third is cultural experience because India does have a lot of rich culture. So we want to give people a taste of the Indian culture as well. So this is the group that we had taken to India October 2019. Um, first of all, there's personalized airport pickup. The trip is all inclusive. So when you pay, it's, it includes everything from the hotel to SIM cards to transportation to food. All you need to do is arrive at the Delhi airport and from there on everything is covered. The first thing that we do is we start with a, a full day conference where we talk about India sourcing strategies, how to find the best suppliers, what are the pitfalls to avoid, um, what are some of the negotiation strategies? We also introduce you to service providers at this conference and you can get to, you know, have like a face-to-face -face, um, conversation and develop 
uh, relationships with these service providers like logistics companies, QC companies. We're, we're, this time we're also getting some brands that have already built successful companies and businesses with Made in India products. And we also do a little Hindi tutorial from my son who is now of course much taller than this. <laughs> And in the evenings, um, you know, we do a lot of masterminding sessions as well. So we'll get together in the hotel and um, uh, over drinks and dinner, we'll mastermind and, you know, share strategies as well. This time we're, we're also going to be doing more of structured masterminds. So we attend the trade show in the, during the day, and then we come back in the evening to the hotel. You can open up your laptop, you can share notes. Uh, this is the trade show that we visit. There are uh, over 4,000 suppliers. All of these exhibitors at the trade show are export focused companies because this is an export focused trade show that is organized by a government organization that is basically focused on exports. So all of the companies here are, you know, they are ready to export products. There are no domestic focused companies here. You'll find a range of home products, fashion products, uh, gift items, a, a full range of um, metal, wood, um, due to all the eco-friendly types of products that we were talking about, furnishings and uh, fashion as well. Most of the companies here are manufacturers. You will find some trading companies, but in general, they're mostly manufacturers with their own factories. We have 17 coaches that are accompanying the trip. And a lot of these coaches are from the US and Australia. They're e-commerce Amazon experts. And then we also have sourcing and logistics experts and QC experts from India who are joining the trip. So you have access to all of these experts to uh, you know, ask them uh, if, they have it, if you have any questions. Then we also do a lot of cultural activities. So this is a Delhi tour, uh, a half day Delhi sightseeing tour that we do as soon as we start that we do a trip to Taj Mahal, which is one of the seven wonders of the world. And it's absolutely incredible. Um, and then we also go to um, you know, different factories. This time we have added a trip to Moradabad, which is where most of the metal and wood products are manufactured. Now we do Bollywood night. So this is basically a cultural event where you get to wear Indian dresses, if there's drinks and dancing. Of course, in India, there has to be dancing, right? If it's Bollywood night. And um, then we also give back to the community. So for every attendee who joins the trip, we sponsor the education of one underprivileged child for one year. And this allows them to buy books and stationery for their school year. It's only $100 per attendee, per, per child, uh, but it really makes a difference in their lives. And then attendees can choose to continue to sponsor the child um, after the trip. So we sponsor the child for a year on behalf of attendees. So yeah, that is about the trip. And I also want to pause over here and talk, ask Mark to share her experience because she joined the previous trip as a coach. And uh, what, what were your impressions and what do you have to say about the trip, Mark? Well, it was a trip of a lifetime. And I'm not just saying that because I was a coach and I'm involved in it. It was probably, um, we've travelled overseas heaps and it was the best organised um, trip I think I've ever been on. Megla is the queen of organisation. Everything is looked after. You don't have to think. Once you get off, that plane you, you met and it's just follow if you can follow your whatsapp or telegram group whatever you're using to communicate with us um it is all you need to do and everything else it's just be at breakfast be on the bus um you know we're actually even having wristbands this time so nobody can go missing um so we can track where they are if they've gone uh, not on the bus or something so um you know it's it's really well done and like it's a lot of friendships are born out of it. And I've just been today, funnily enough, back on the Telegram group from 2019 because somebody rang me from Western Australia today and said, I'm coming to Melbourne. Is there anybody who'd like to meet me for coffee? Um, we haven't seen him for three years, but he wants to come and catch up with it, all the people that he you know, was with on the trip. And he said, oh, can you get Sean? Because he was my roommate and I really got on well with him. So, um, you know, it proves that you know, that doesn't happen very often. You meet people in passing and they walk away and that's it. But uh, we are very still actively friendly with those people. And I think that's another thing is going on this trip and touching and feeling. You can look at samples or buy a, a sample or two samples and get sent out here, but you can walk around that trade fair for three days and 
you can decide by, you know, do I like that? Do I, you know, the PET stuff, like people probably go, that's really going to be hard. It's not. Or the leather, you can feel it and you can walk away and either decide on the spot, am I going to, to do that? And you can also take one of our diaries that we give you and teach you how to walk around the show and walk away with, you know, 100 products that you might proceed within the next 12 or 18 months. Um, so you can have yourself, you don't have to sort of, you know, think, oh, what am I going to source next? Where will I get it? Because you should have a list of all the things that you really liked from the fair. So, yeah, I think it's um, well worth it's, you know, the, the cost of the trip with everything you get. And I think Megla forgot to mention that you even get alcohol on most nights as well because we have the trips gone to the next level. We said after that trip, you couldn't improve on that trip, Megla, but we did decide it was a little bit rushed and we've actually added an extra day to the trip this time. So for the same money, you get an extra day um, on the trip and an extra night to accommodation. And being in India now, Megla has moved back from Singapore where she was when she organised it last time. She's done a very good deal with the hotel we're staying at and they're including drinks for, I think it's all but one night, the whole trip, there's um, alcohol or soft drinks, whatever, through the mastermind and throughout our dinner each night. So that's a huge saving too if you've ever been in a five-star hotel and ordered a few drinks at the bar. <laughs> so, yeah, I think yeah. it's, yeah, great. Sounds good. Uh, I really like this visual representation of the experience and it feels like it could be a just a, a how to say, a regular tourism journey, uh, like a traveler journey to uh, India with your group. So my question, uh, obviously, this kind of trip is very useful for those established sellers who maybe want to find alternative supplier or they have a product line and they want to find uh, products from India for their existing products. But what if it's um, someone, uh, they are happy with China or some other sourcing country? But is it useful for them just to come and explore, like if they don't have any goals or any, you know, any ideas what they want to source from India? Yes, definitely. Because I think even if they are currently not sourcing a product that is, uh, you know, made in India, it is always a good idea to explore other countries and to maybe add a product from those countries as well, because then you're diversifying your product line and you're not, you're diversifying your sourcing um, you know, countries as well, and you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. So yes, we encourage people to, you know, add a product line from India or Vietnam or any other country and diversify. So you can do that. And it's a really good experience, you know, because we've got so many coaches who, who are coming from the US specifically. There's Tim Jordan. He's one of the coaches. And, you know, Tim is, of course, well known in the industry. And I mean, just imagine spending eight days with Tim Jordan, um, regardless of where you're sourcing from, that in itself is going to, you know, be so much uh, so impactful for your business. And you form a relationship with these coaches as well. So, you know, you're spending eight days with Tim after the trip, you're at, you know, you're like friends with him. You give him a call and you can have a chat with him. So those relationships that are formed at these trips are absolutely uh, invaluable. So, yeah, to answer your question, I would say even if you're not currently sourcing a product, that is made in India, definitely come to see what's out there. You might be amazed by the types of products that you see. You might get some ideas with all of the hundreds and thousands of products that you see, and you might be able to add a new product category to your brand. Yeah, amazing. And uh, once again, once this uh, trip of uh, happening and when is the deadline for people to sign up? So the trip dates are October 12th to the 19th, 2022. And then we have an optional trip to Muradabad that is from the 19th to the 22nd. And um, you can sign up anytime before August 31st. Um, there's there's no limitation as such, but of course, if you sign up earlier, then you, know, you will get better airfares because as your travel date gets closer, then you know, the airfare, airfares increase. So if you do want good airfares, then we suggest to book as early as possible. In fact, the trip is like almost, um, um, it's not full, but it's almost 30 to 40% full. So, um, and people have already started buying their tickets uh, and making their plans. So yeah, I mean, the earlier you can sign up, the better it would be for you in terms of getting good airfare. And other attendees you expect from which countries mostly like Australia, also uh, US and uh, Europe? Yeah, so we've got Australia, US, we've got uh, France, um, Italy, um, UK, um, maybe some from Dubai as well. 
New oh, Zealand. Very international. Yeah, those are some of the criteria. Very international. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we organize international in-person events and it's a really amazing experience where the, when different cultures and perspectives, they mix up because, you know, Australians will see differently the same thing than Europeans or US people. Okay, exactly. Just yeah. something that All right. I didn't mention is when you book, if you, you don't have to pay the whole amount in full, um, it's on a two-month sort of like payment plan. So you pay um, a deposit when you book and then you pay the balance in a month's time. So you don't have to actually sign up. It, it just secures you a seat, um, you know, in the meantime, and then you can pay the balance um, as the time goes on. Yeah. So everybody watching, you'll find the link below in the description for the Indian sourcing trip. Besides the trip, uh, you run the Project India Sourcing Network. Can you give a little bit information about this? Yes, so indiasourcing.net is our B2B sourcing platform where you can find everything you need to source products from India. We've got vetted export manufacturers. We've got vetted service providers, such as sourcing agencies, logistics companies, um, quality control companies, lawyers, packaging, basically any service provider that you need to source from India. All of our suppliers are vetted by us. Their, um, their suppliers are only by invite on the platform. And um, we check that they are legitimate companies, that they are manufacturers, there are no trading companies on the website, and that they are export experienced. So very, very high quality uh, list of suppliers on the website. And we also remove suppliers. If we get any complaints from any of them, we just instantly remove them. So you know, you can be sure that the companies are, uh, are good quality and your risk is mitigated to a very large extent. And then we also do a lot of education so we teach people how to source from India. We've got an online workshop that people can buy. It's uh, on demand. And we also do an India sourcing mastermind. Uh, we also do one-on-one -on -one coaching or consulting. If you're a bigger company, if you just need some advice, you can also book a call with us and get some consulting um, uh, advice as well. Yeah, we'll put the links for the sourcing trip, for the mastermind, for the on-demand training. So all these links will be there below. All right. And uh, if people have questions about especially this uh, trip to India, because probably it's a high investment and they have questions, uh, what's the best email address to contact you? The best email address is info at indiasourcingtrip.com. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Megla and Margaret. And I hope you will have success in your Indian trip. Thank do. you so much, Augusta. Yes. And hope you can join us too. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Good luck in your bye business. Bye. I hope you heard some useful information and now you got a better understanding what you can get if you would like to source your products from India. All the links you will find below to the Indian sourcing trip to the Indian sourcing webinar, which you can watch on demand, as well as Indian sourcing mastermind. And now I would like to invite you to check other video where we talk about other countries where you could source products from.